Do you need a license to invest in real estate? The answer is What's up everybody, it's Jamel Gibbs, your family-oriented entrepreneur. Welcome to another video. In today's video, we're gonna talk about, number one, if you need a license to wholesale or to invest in real estate. But in addition to that, I wanna to react to this video from another YouTuber, from someone who started off as a real estate investor and decided to become a real estate agent based on his personal experiences. Now, my personal experience has been completely different. I started off as an agent became a real estate broker in Brooklyn, New York, and then I became a real estate investor very shortly after. So let's go ahead and jump into this. Real estate wholesaling, and this is exactly how it works. So the definition here, a wholesaler contracts a home with the seller, then finds an interested party to buy it. So here's an example. I found a home uh, or a seller who's, who willing, who's willing to sell their home. They want 45,000 for it. Okay, perfect. I get the home under contract to myself for 45,000 saying that I'm gonna buy your home for 45,000. I shop that contract around because the contract is assignable. I shop that contract around, find me a buyer who's willing to pay 55,000. So I make that spread in the middle. That's basically what real estate wholesaling is. When it comes to wholesaling real estate, what you're looking to do is find discounted real estate. Typically discounted real estate is gonna have some physical work that needs to be done to the property. All right, so a house is gonna need some work. So let's say you find a house that's worth $100,000 if it was in tip top shape. What you're looking to do is buy that house at 60 to 65 cents on a dollar minus the repairs that needs to go into the property. So typically on a wholesale deal, I'm looking for 35% minimum, a 35% equity spread. I'm looking to pay $65,000. If the house needs $20,000 in work, I'm gonna pay $45,000 tops on that particular house. That's gonna allow me to go ahead and sell that agreement, sell my equitable interest for a higher price. Most investors are gonna pay 70 cents on a dollar or a little bit more based on what's happening in their local market, but they'll pay 70 cents on a dollar in order to be able to pick up that property from you. So if I pick up a house for 65 cents on a dollar minus the repairs. Let's say it's $20,000 again. I'm paying $45,000 for that house. I can then turn around and sell that contract for, let's say, 70 cents on a dollar, which is $70,000 minus the repairs. And let's say that that's $50,000. So that gives me a $5,000 profit spread. So now we're going to get into why I quit. So I actually had two deals under contract at the same time at the title office. And I basically had to go through all kind of hoops and everything just to pull and keep the deal together kept on together got the closing they got my check and i was just sitting there talking to my girl like this is this is stressful number one i don't think he gave it enough time to let the wholesale business materialize for him to be fruitful uh and number two he said it was stressful i tell people this all the time come into the business with the right expectations if you're coming in looking to get rich overnight looking to make huge checks overnight, then you're probably going to fail. 100% of the time, you need to come in with the right expectations and then be able to build your foundation in order to be able to grow from there. So let's jump back into this video. Like holding a deal together, I'm, I'm pretty sure being a real estate agent is exactly the same. The real difference is as an agent, you're selling somebody's house, you're brokering somebody's house and they're paying you, let's say a 6% commission in order to be able to do it maybe more, some people get 10, some people get three. As a real estate wholesaler or an investor, you're not licensed, you're not brokering somebody's house, you're signing an agreement to purchase the property and that agreement allows you equitable interest that you can then go ahead and sell to somebody else for a profit. So that's the difference between the two. Now I do see the benefit in doing both. Being a real estate agent, and an investor can benefit you as long as you present to the seller that you're a licensed real estate agent or broker who's basically coming to the seller as a buyer. But do I think that you need to go to school to get a license in order to be a successful real estate investor? No. What he's saying is he quit wholesaling because he thought that 
being an agent is easier for him. And I'm going to applaud him for that because he figured out what works for him. You personally will have to make a decision on what's going to work best for you. Do you want to broker other people's houses and only create active income through brokering houses and pay more in taxes? Or do you want to allow yourself to be able to wholesale and create other wealth generating avenues of income, which will allow you to minimize your taxes and make a lot more money? Let's take that same deal before and let's, uh, Let's break it down as a real estate agent. So think about it like this. You have that same 45, you know that you run into that seller who's willing to sell their home for $45,000. She wants 45,000. So you say, okay, let's sign a listing agreement. I'll actually put it up at this price and we'll get it going. Um, as a real estate agent, you're able to put that on the MLS and then basically leave it alone. You don't even have to shop for a buyer. Buyers actually come to you. So then you get offers come in. In today's market, let's speak honestly, you get a multiple offer situation. And with that happening, you have a buyer who actually comes in and says, you know what? I really like this property. I feel like I can turn it around real quick. I'm willing to offer you 60K closing quick, cash, everything like that. As a real estate wholesaler, you basically have to go through your pipe, through your buyers and uh, see if you can find uh, someone who's willing to buy the deal. And uh, if you only have one buyer who's willing to buy the deal and he offers you 40, he said, you know what? I, I can't pay 55 for it, but I can pay 45. That's break even. You're giving the seller 45, you're giving him, he getting the price of 45, you get nothing in the middle. So that's what a lot of agents do. Even when I was a real estate agent, you can become either a buyer's agent where you're showing buyer's houses or you can become a listing agent. You just simply list the houses and allow other brokers to sell it. See, that's where I personally don't agree. You're going to a seller to sell their house. They're expecting you to sell their house, not for you to put their listing on the MLS and then let it sit. They're expecting you to work to get that house sold. In a normalized market, the property is gonna sit on the market for a little while based on what's happening in the local area. If the property doesn't sell and it's been sitting on the market for quite some time, the seller becomes frustrated. But on the flip side of that, as an investor, even as a wholesaler, you're getting a property under contract. You have a specific closing date that you need to assign your contract by. And if you don't, you're going to lose your earnest money deposit that you put down if you put down an earnest money deposit. So you have more to lose in this situation than a seller. And yes, it's less risky to become an agent and simply list houses, but you can also build a bad reputation for yourself by not selling houses. He's saying that it's going to be more difficult to wholesale a house, which is not true if you buy at the right price. Price sells everything. Same thing with being an agent. Price sells everything. You can't pay $45,000 if the seller wants $45,000 and the house is only worth $45,000. There's no money in a deal. Let me repeat that. You cannot pay market value for a house and expect to make a profit. In some states, wholesaling is illegal. So you might wanna keep that in mind. So in the state of Florida, it's a great area. Uh, so in the state of Florida, you are required to have a real estate license if you are paid for real estate services, including helping someone buy a home, helping someone sell a home, helping someone rent a home, or helping someone find a place to rent. You're supposed to be a licensed real estate agent in order to get paid for that. But the gray area in the state of Florida is that you can actually get the home under contract as yourself, say, hey, I wanna buy your house and actually sell the contract. So you're not selling the house, you're selling the contract for the home. That's what wholesaling is. That's not a gray area at all. You get what's called equitable interest by signing a contract on a property and then you can sell that interest to someone else. There's no gray area there at all. And that's not only in Florida, that's nationwide. Now, granted in certain areas, right, you might have to get a license in order to be able to operate as a wholesaler, which is fine. So at that point, you have to make the decision. Do I want to wholesale or do I want to be an agent? How do I want to operate my real estate business? And then you go with what's best for you. But for everyone else in the country, you can get that equitable interest by signing a contract and assigning that equitable interest to someone else. And even if they crack down on that, you can still do what's called a double close, where you can close the transaction, take ownership for a minute, five minutes, two hours, two days, 
and then go ahead and sell the house, not assign the equitable interest, but sell the house to your end buyer. It takes just as much work to wholesale houses as it does to become a realtor and find deals. Everybody's a genius. Everybody's an expert when the market is hot. It's when the market is not hot and you have to make the adjustments. You have to pivot. That's when you're going to find out what you're really made of. So do you need a license to invest in real estate? The answer is absolutely not. You do not need a license. Can it benefit you to have a license? Absolutely. And that's something that you have to decide for yourself. Shout out to Martez Kelly. Make sure you subscribe to his channel. I think this video was very good. It was very informative. And I think that he provided an honest perspective from his point of view on whether you should become an agent or become a wholesaler or get licensed or not. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, click the notification bell. Let me know in the comment section what you thought about my opinion, what you thought about what he was talking about. Am I wrong? Is he right? I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say. Leave a comment and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.